everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you what was in our January morning basket. So I'm a mama to two toddlers. I've got Rupert who's almost four, so he's almost no longer a toddler which is crazy. And I also have Toby who's a year and a half, he will be two in May. And I chose to do this morning basket because I saw so many people that I really admired on Instagram using the morning basket and it seemed to be just a really nice gentle way to introduce learning and uh, excitement about education to children and while obviously Rupert is still quite young and he doesn't have to do any work or academic work or learning technically because just everyday life is learning for a child at that age I really did want to do something a little bit more structured with him just to help him get ready for the school years um, and just so he wasn't lagging behind plus I was able to see where he was at with his learning. He is a little bit delayed so it was really important for me to feel really involved in his education and yeah I'm, I'm so happy that I started doing this morning basket because it's been nothing but a joy to be honest. Everything that we've done has gone down so well and there's been a few standout favourites that I'm really excited to share with you too. When it comes to my younger toddler, Toby, he also does some of these um, activities. In fact, he can pretty much do everything that Rupert's doing as well. Um, plus, he loves listening to the stories. And if he gets bored uh, quicker than Rupert does, I just let him go off and play with some toys. Or alternatively, I take the basket and I do it at his nap time. So Rupert has just one-on-one -on -one time with me. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to jump into the morning basket and show you what we've been using. I'm going to be changing all this up for next month and we'll be using different resources and books. So I thought this would be quite fun to show you what worked for us in January. Okay, so let's start right at the beginning. When I do my morning basket, I like to start off with like a little song or a nursery rhyme. And I picked something out of this Mother Goose Treasury. We've had this for a while now and it's fantastic. It's got all the classic nursery rhymes in it and um, with cute little illustrations. And we just pick something that's relevant and read um, it out. Uh, I've been doing Hey Diddle Diddle um, with Rupert and he loves that one. He loves the pictures in it. And I do try and kind of loosely connect this to the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum, which we loosely use. Um, and for example, there was Moon Week, which is why we did, did Hey Diddle Diddle. Um, and we also did Twinkle Twinkle Little Star when we were doing the night sky. Um, so if I can't find one that matches, that's fine, but it's nice to kind of connect it all together. Once we've done our nursery rhyme, I move on to this gorgeous book. It's so beautiful. It's called A First Book of Nature by Nicola Davis. And this is a Walker Books. I always think that Walker books do incredible publications. Um, I've just noticed that as a kind of theme. Um, but this book, I had no idea what to expect when I ordered this. But first of all, it's huge. And secondly, it's incredible inside. It's illustrated by the artist Mark Herald. And um, I have quite a few of his things anyway um, up in the house. And so this just fits in perfectly. And as you can see, it's just so beautiful. Um, I would actually just almost buy a second copy of this and cut out some of the pictures and frame them because it's very, very beautiful. And what I love about this as well is that um, it has, it's obviously broken down into seasons, so it's spring, summer, autumn, winter. And then each page has got a beautiful picture, but it's also got a little poem um, by Nicola Davis. Um, and it's just fantastic. So here I've marked this one, Winter Trees. Um, again, in the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum, there was a week for trees. So we read this poem and uh, we looked at this picture and talked about the picture, which was fantastic. So um, yeah, just gorgeous. We also did Snow Song and it's just gone down so well with Rupert. And I can see this being a book that we use for many years. And these are books that we will definitely be putting back into our basket for February because they're just staples and they're seasonal and they'll work throughout the year. So another seasonal book that we will be keeping is this one here, Slow Down by Rachel Williams, illustrated by Freya Hartos. 
and when I've, I've seen this obviously so many times pop up on my recommendations on Amazon and I just wasn't really that pulled in by the cover and I still thought oh I'm sure I can live without it and then one day I was on Instagram and I saw a peek inside this and I just could not believe how amazing it is. Basically it has every double page is a nature story so for example a tadpole becomes a frog and then it walks you through um, all the stages with a little bit of um, info. There's cherry blossoms for spring. Um, just everything. It goes from starfish, oysters. We've been doing the wolf house to his pack um, for moon week, which we loved. And we practiced our wolf house. Um, there was also, I'm trying to find the other one that we did for winter. Um, let's see if I can find it. And there's a hare that runs a hungry fox, which is quite wintry. And there's also one on the moon. Oh yeah, here it is. We also did a snowflake falls and we did the one on the moon as well. So um, what I would do with this is with those um, sections I showed you, we would just open it up and I would sit with Rupert either on my knee or um, sitting really close by and we, I'd read him the story and he'd look at the pictures. And if we could, we'd find an activity that tied in with it as well. So for example, with Moon Week, we looked at circles and then like cutting out circle shapes with Play-Doh. Um, winter tree, we went outside and looked at trees. Um, so yeah, it's just worked really, really well. Slow Down has been a fantastic book and a really good addition to a morning basket. And if there are days, and there's not many days like this, but if there's days where I am just like, I can't do the morning basket, I've got a meeting or I'm really feeling tired, I know I can give him that book and he will be absorbed for at least an hour <laughs> just looking at the pictures, he adores it. So it's, it's quite a handy one to have in the basket. Okay, so. I also have been using this guide. Let me just find the beginning. This one here is Whole Family Rhythms Winter Guide. This is um, by Megan, ne I feel like Megan Wilson, I think. Um, I always forget. I don't think she's got her name on it. No, but it's a beautiful guide. I, someone said to me that these aren't in publication anymore, which is really sad. But they're really great for early years. Um, the idea behind them is that it brings you through the entire season. Um, so for example, there's December week two and all the way into February, of course. And then there's just like a little activity. There's a story. And here, I'll show you this one. So this is February monthly guide week three, gingerbread fun and spirit. And then there's a finger game or a finger story, which is quite handy. Uh, really good for early years. Finger stories um, really do help with speech development and then there's a story so this is the gingerbread man and she has some suggestions for how to bring the story alive using props then there's a weekly hike idea um, and then there's a recipe so it's just gingerbread cookies and then she also has a watercolor painting using blue and green and then there's winter shades which is coloring just using winter shades and a crafting idea with gingerbread salt dough uh, beeswax modeling and then it just goes on throughout the season so you could replicate that quite easily yourself if you can't get hold of that guide there's a couple of things that i used in january the window star um idea so we're working on a window star at the moment we're not finished and also the uh salt painting so i love those ideas and there were also a couple of really fantastic stories in this i can't quite remember what they were off the top of my head but one was about um jack frost and a fairy or snow fairy frost fairy i think and then the other one was a folk story about star i think it was called the star money but it was really fantastic so that was great for our read aloud and some craft ideas okay so moving on to phonics i was so scared to do this with rupert because i had no idea um how to do it but um instead of teaching him the abc's like a b c d I did a bit of research and I realized actually it's better to teach children the um, phonic sounds. So for example, cat, you've got k -k -k cat, um, or for ant, ant. And this book is quite fun because it has these little signs that the kids can do for like 
Mm, they can rub their tummies. Uh, turtle. T -t -t -t. Um, and that's what I've been working with, with working on with Rue. And this is the ABC See Here Do book by Stephanie Howell. You can buy this on Amazon. It's not too expensive. And it's working quite well. It's definitely hard to teach this to Rupert. He, this of all the things I'm finding, this kind of thing the hardest. But I noticed the other day he did this just randomly on his own, which was fantastic. And I think this is a really good visual, uh, hands-on, all-body way of learning the alphabet and um, learning to read. So we've been working on this. And once we've done, let's say I've just done um, A for ant, then what we do is we go into our Waldorf alphabet book and we pick the corresponding letter, like the letter A, um, and then we look at all the different things and try and find all the objects. So there's apple, so I'll be like, ah, apple. And there's angel, ant, arrow. There's tons of um, images to find in each of these uh, pictures. So there's like B for baby, C for cat. And along the frame, there's just all these other pictures. So really, really cool. Um, love this book. I think it's fantastic. A really good one to sit down with your kid and like find all the items together and get really excited. And then you can practice those sounds as well as you go. So I kind of keep those together and we work on a letter a day and quite often revisiting the same letter because that seems to work for us. I mentioned the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum. If you don't know what that is, it's just a beautiful nature-based curriculum for all ages of children and it's actually really affordable. I'll link it below if you're interested, especially if you are at home at the moment with lockdown and you're homeschooling your children. I really recommend this uh, curriculum. It will work with all age groups. Really great way of learning about nature and science um, with your kids and I highly recommend it. And it's so hands-on and practical that I think even if you have children who are finding being at home quite hard, I think you will find some mutual ground with this curriculum. So do go check it out. But um, as part of that, I have a few books in our January basket that tied along. Now, some of them have disappeared off somewhere. I'm sure Rupert's probably taken them off to read. Um, but I thought I'd show you some of our favorites. We had Katie and the Starry Night. And this is a look at Van Gogh. And it's just brilliant. It also tied in with the theme of the night sky, which we loved. Uh, we had Zoo in the Sky. Uh, which was another great one about the night sky but I'm not going to show you those in depth because I actually showed those to you in the winter books video which I'll link below. Um, I also have a couple of Usborne books. I have Usborne Look Inside Nature and this is fantastic. It's got lots of flaps and there's usually something relevant to the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum that I can find in this book. So love that too. And this one we got out of the library and I love it. It's fantastic. It's the Osborne My First Outdoor book. And it's got loads of really sweet things in it. So I'll give you an example. So there's a double page on trees and leaves. There is animal tracking and stargazing. So this is a really, really good one for early years. If you want to do a bit of a nature curriculum, I highly recommend it. The pages are that kind of like in between paper and board book and really great. I think this is one that we'll probably buy ourselves and keep in our, in our morning basket so we can pull it out whenever we're doing our nature section. I also love these sweet little, little lift and look books by Osborne. I think these are quite new to Osborne because I've only just come across them. And this is the woods one. And this is perfect for Toby um, when we're doing the tree week. We had a look at this and it's super cute and perfect for that young toddler. And he just adores it. Rupert likes this too, um, but very, very sweet. I was very impressed with that. I thought it was gorgeous. So we have that in our basket too for Toby. Um, and that's all the nature books that I've got in here at the moment. Like I said, I did have more, but uh, I can't find them. <laughs> okay, so another thing that we have in our basket is one of these cards. These are from the Usborne painting flashcards. This is Kadinsky, but we also had Van Gogh. Um, but because we were doing a lot on shapes, I did introduce a bit of Kadins Kadinsky as well, and Rupert loved that. So I highly recommend these cards. It comes with a whole pack of them. It brings you through all the kind of classic paintings, and then there's some info on the back, which is great for parents as well, because I know my art history needs 
um, sprucing up for sure. Um, so those are brilliant. And how I work with those is literally I just give the card to Rue. I point out some of the colours, the shapes, so I ask him like, oh, do, what, can you find something? Um, and it's just a really gentle introduction to art. And actually it's really inspiring for me too as a mum. I love art, I went to art college. So for me going through something like that is so inspiring and really just like warms my soul. <laughs> so I love it too. And I think actually, I want to just say, as mums who have chosen to homeschool or are doing extra educational work at home, it's really, really important that you enjoy it as well. Otherwise your child is gonna pick up on it. If you are excited about your morning basket, your child is almost definitely gonna be excited about the morning basket. So while of course we're all on different budgets, try and get some resources, some books that really inspire you because that is gonna come across. And I think with education and learning, a lot of it is about showing the child how to enjoy learning getting excited, showing them that it's not about grades or competitiveness, but it's actually about joy. And there is, there's definitely something to be said about teaching a child how to learn and how to look at the world with open eyes and just find true pleasure in learning. I think it's such a skill and um, a beautiful thing that we can give our children. So definitely either use your library or if your birthday's coming up maybe ask for a couple of really nice nature books or something but get excited about your morning basket because that is the key especially if you're doing this with early years as well you've got a great opportunity to start with a clean slate and really instill that love of learning from a young age anyway <laughs> let's get keep on going um Okay, so let's talk about numbers and counting. So I do have a couple of things for counting, not a lot. It's not something that we've delved into massively. And this is gonna so depend on the, the level of your child. Um, if you've got a child who's a real brainy with maths, there's some amazing things. I love, um, what's it called, wild maths. I'm gonna link it below. There's a whole curriculum for kids. So if you've got kids who've got really leaning towards maths, check that out. But if you've got a little one who's just starting, I do love this book here. It's the Touch and Count with Peter Rabbit. And it goes through the letters up to 10 and it's got these lovely different textures. Plus you can count all the Beatrix Potter um, characters. And it's really sweet. I really like this. Um, very, very gentle approach to um, getting familiar with counting. We also have a couple of resources for counting in here. Usually I have wooden counters, but they've gone somewhere. But here I've got some cows that we were counting, like one, two, three. Um, I also have the popsicle sticks, which are quite handy, these are all colored. And we use these to make shapes and to count. So um, those are quite handy, super cheap, a handy little resource to have. Um, yeah, so I think that's all my counting stuff. Okay. Um, so let's talk about shapes. Shapes was a real theme for January for us in our morning basket. Um, we had so many resources actually for shapes because I sort of realized that Rupert didn't really know much about shapes. Um, and I felt a bit bad about that. So um, I decided to just bring things way back and keep it super simple. And I started off with these Bob books. Now my son loves books. So this was a really good introduction to shapes for him. This Bob's book set is fantastic. It brings you through um, that pre-reading pre skills. So there's a whole box of them. Um, it goes through shapes, um, sorting, matching things. I haven't even gone through all of these, but um, they are brilliant. The ones we've used in January are these ones. So there is learning simple shapes. There was finding hidden shapes matching shapes, learning simple sorting, sorting and classifying and matching and sorting. And these stories are really simple. They're Sally Circle, Tanner Triangle and Seth Square and they go on little adventures. And I did not think this was gonna do it for my son but he is obsessed with these characters and he loves the little books. And at the beginning of, at the beginning of each chapter, it gives you a couple of ideas for how to use the books, other resources you could use. Um, so yeah, really, really simple, but they do work. And I do recommend them if you are 
um, trying to teach your child those pre-reading skills. There are also a whole series of these. There's um, the next series up is reading readiness, then there's stage one starting to read, stage two emerging reader, and stage three developing readers. So no matter where your child sits on um, their development, you should be able to find something to kind of go along with that, with these Bob books, which is fab. Also had a couple more books um, about shapes. This one's quite sweet. It's the Brown Rabbit's Shapes, and he pulls all these balloons out and blows them up, and they go whizzing off, and Rupert is, thinks this book is hilarious. <laughs> um, I'll try and find one of the pictures of whizzing off. There you go. So it, it shows you ovals and circles, cylinders, that kind of thing. And I actually bought, I can't find them, but I did actually buy a load of balloons to go with this. And we did that as an activity after we read it. We blew up balloons, looked at the shape and let them go whizzing off. And it was so much fun. And uh, yeah, Rupert was obsessed with that. This book is fantastic too. It's Mouse Shapes by Ellen Stoll Walsh. And this book is all about these mice that go hiding from the cat in a load of shapes and then they make different things from the cutout paper shapes. And uh, one of the things that we've done with this book is we got loads of colored paper, chopped up squares, circles, triangles, and then made things from them. And I think that's a really fun activity that you can tie in with this book. Um, you can use scissor skills and then you can use like building um, items using the shapes. So really, really fun, highly recommend that. Um, and then I just have like a really simple touchy book on shapes as well that we got from the library that Toby's been reading. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have a sip of tea. Oh, so much talking. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I've got to show you are the sensory shapes by Yellow Door. Now I saw these on Lady Bird Library's Instagram, who I really enjoy following. She's got fantastic recommendations. These are beautiful though. I think they're made of stone and they're really chunky. And there's a whole load in here. I think there's maybe 10 or 12. And um, yeah, they're so beautiful and really tactile. They've got this lovely um, tracing shape around the edge. So this is quite fun because you can do um, crayon rubbings with these. You can have the child trace them with the finger um, and also you can count with them. So there's quite a few different fun activities that you can do with these shapes. Plus because they're stone you could use them in sensory tubs or anything like that as well and they're not going to get destroyed like paper would. So those have been fantastic and a nice little resource. I also used a couple of shape puzzles. So this is the HAPE colour and shape sorter. They have the shapes but um, is it what's the word graduated in science um, so that was quite fun for the boys to do <laughs> I just got Toby coming hi Toby um, and then I also had this really sweet oops, I also had this really sweet Melissa and Doug puzzle which is very simple it's got the square the rectangle but it was fun to pull this out and get the boys to do it and talk about the shape so that was quite fun too Okay, so you might be able to hear Rupert in the background now because the boys have come back in with their daddy, but I'm almost done anyway. I almost showed you everything in the basket. The next couple of books, these are such fun. They are wipe clean um, pen control books. And these are, they don't do letters or anything. It's just like squiggles. And the boys are obsessed with these. If you've got kids that love stealing your pens and biros and just want to scribble over everything, this is like heaven for them. There's a little white clean marker that comes with them. Good boy, Toby. And you can literally just give them the pen and they get to work coloring away on them. And they think it's so much fun. Just giving Toby his <laughs> on there. Um, if I had to pick one, I actually think I prefer the Osborne first pen control one. Um, it was just maybe just a little bit clearer, but they're both really good. The Collins one is also good and they're not expensive at all. And actually, I think these would make really good books to take in a car journey too. Not that we're doing much car journeys at the moment, but, um, I thought that was quite fun. The final thing I've got in my basket, well, the final two things to show you is this lovely, uh, color paddle in the color blue. Um, this just ties in well with our night sky and our moon and the kind of the themes of winter being quite blue. Um, so I brought this out and we were looking at this and just talking about blue. And then I also had this gorgeous silk. This is the night sky silk. We had this in our winter baskets 
and um, I had this in as well for story time um, when we were talking about the night sky. So, <laughs> got Foxy here. You bring me Foxy. So that's everything in our January basket. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll try and do another video for February, at the end of February, and just show you some of the resources that we use and why we love them. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye!